In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a strongly typed data set from data adapters. Now, in a previous video, 2450, we talked about strongly typed data sets in the video titled Data Set Concepts. We talked about how there were many different ways to create strongly typed data sets and the benefits of using strongly typed versus untyped data sets. So I'll leave that discussion to the previous video. What we're going to do is use just one of the techniques to create strongly typed data sets, and that's using by using the data adapter uh, generate data set uh, method. So first we're going to create, uh, go to uh, the pubs database and drag and drop our table onto the design surface, which creates for us a SQL connection object and a data adapter object that's configured for that table. We'll go and select the configured data adapter. And we've been through this a number of times in different videos, so I'm just going to quickly go through it. Select uh, SQL statements, select the default SQL statement. It did it. I'm going to click Finish. For this method, I'm going to select then the Generate Data Set option to create a data set. And when I do, it asks to choose the data set, and I'm going to rename the default one to DS Employee. And I'm going to select the table to add to the data set, which is employee. That comes from SQL Data Adapter 1. And that I want to add this data set to the designer. So it does it all in one step for me without having to do this in multiple steps. Or I'd have to manually add the data set to the designer. I'll click OK. And in just a moment, it'll create an XSD file for me, which we'll take a look at, plus a reference to that XSD file on our design surface. So the first thing we'll do is go to our Solution Explorer take a look at our dsemployee.xsd. I'm going to double click it and it'll open up the uh, XML schema designer in our main area. And once it loads, notice that we have a representation of the employee table from the pubs database. This is what makes our data set strongly typed by having uh, this element employee and having all the sub-elements that represent each of the columns in the employee table um, and then having their their um, their data type as well predefined in an early binding situation. So I just opened this up for illustration's sake just to kind of explain that this is what makes uh, an early early bound strongly typed data set. I'm going to go ahead and close that now. Click no. So the next thing that we need to do is actually add some controls from our toolbox onto our design surface so we can create a little application here. So what I'm going to do is drag and drop a data grid and drag and drop a button onto our surface. The other advantage of a strongly typed data set is that our data grid can know in advance the number of columns and uh, the names of the columns so that it can give us kind of some representation here in design time of what the form is going to look like. So I dragged and dropped everything into place. I'm going to set some properties of the data grid, such as the data source, which is our DS employee one and our data member. And notice that it automatically pre-populates the employee ID, F name, middle initial, and so on. So in order to populate this, I'm going to have to fill our data set with data from our data source. And so I'm going to double click here on our designer surface to open up the form load. And I just pasted some code into place. Let me explain. We have our SQL data adapter one. We use the fill method. We pass in the data set and the table that we're going to populate. The next thing that I'm going to, well, first of all, before I go on, notice that I'm not going to call any fill method or set the data source or data member or call any data binding method on the data grid. That's because um, in the WinForms applications, when you build those, you don't have to use that, that data binding um, statement like you do in web forms. So let's go back to our GUI and double click on our button one click event. And I've pasted the start of a message box statement where we're going to print out the last name. Now I want to show you the other advantage of a strongly typed data set. I'm going to type in DS employee one dot. And notice when I do that, that it pops open our um, IntelliSense. I'm going to type in E for employee. And look, we have the employee table listed there. So I'm going to select row zero. 
and then I'm going to select dot, and notice that the IntelliSense pops up again, and I'm going to type the letter L for last name, and it shows up in our list. So it knows all the columns and all the tables within uh, our data set, and it's a very neat way of doing it. So I'm going to do that, and now it'll pop up a message box that says uh, last name, and then what, whoever's the, the first row of our employee table, give, take the last name and show it in the message box. And I just wanted to add one more thing. Um, in VB.net, uh, it tries to give you the benefit of the, do the doubt at compile time in regards to uh, compiling a application with the type of situation we have here where we have dsemployee1.employee0.jobid, which should be an, uh, an integer and we set it to a string because behind the scenes Visual Basic is going to try and do uh, a, a cast or a type conversion on Jim. If it was 52, this statement might work and so it's going to give you the benefit of the doubt and allow you to do this. In C Sharp, it's type safe, it's not going to allow you to do this, it won't even compile. So that's the only point that I want to make there. So let's go ahead and save this. Then let's build our solution. Great, and now we're going to try and run it. So we'll click the start. And our form one pops up. Notice that it is fully populated with strongly typed data. At this point, it doesn't matter if it's strongly typed or not. We don't know the difference. Then I'm going to click our button and we have a message box pop up with the last name of the first row, Accordi, and that's our application. So we were able to create a strongly typed data set using only um, the uh, SQL data adapter's ability to generate data sets. And then we did some binding. We talked about uh, what the data set looks like on the XSD, uh, but for the most part this is a very simple video and a very simple uh, technique to create strongly typed data sets. This is probably the approach I'd recommend 80% of the time, uh, if, unless you have some reason not to do it this way. So I hope you appreciate this video and that uh, you learned a little bit more about data sets. Thank you.